Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, Today is our topic of discussion, poliomyelitis and then peripheral neuropathy from the chapter of Neurological Emergency. First, poliomyelitis. So, as usual, first we will segregate the term, we will see the name first. So, poliomyelitis. So, what is mean by myelitis? Myelitis means, so itis we know, so the inflammation of the spinal cord, it is called the myelitis. So, because of that spinal cord inflammation, it more specifically, it will affect the motor nerve. So, here we see the motor nerve. It will cause the motor neuron destruction and motor, uh, sorry, muscle denervation. So, motor neuron destruction means we know. So, it will destroy the motor neurons. Mean the same time, it will cause muscle denervation. Denervation. So, denervation, this is a muscle means there is a loss of nerve supply. There is a loss of nerve supply that is called the denervation. So, so myelitis because of the inflammation, it will affect, it will destroy the motor neurons. Mean the same time, it will cause muscle denervation. Uh, so, this, this condition is called as a poliomyelitis. Okay. So, in poliomyelitis, majorly that it is caused by the virus. Entrovirus. So, entrovirus means we know that a mode of transmission will be in a fecal oral route. So, that is going to be entrovirus infection. It will affect the motor neuron destruction and muscle denervation. So, again the point we told mainly it will affect the spinal cord, right. So, it will result in the proximal limb weakness, flaccidity, flaccid paralysis, absent tendon reflex, fasciculation. So, the different term here is a flaccidity or flaccid paralysis. So, what is going to be flaccid paralysis? So, here the muscle unable to maintain the, uh, the uh, normal posture or normal uh, stiff nature. So, uh, that is the thing, that is a flaccid paralysis. So, the muscle will become a more soft and then floppy. So, that is called flaccidity. Absent tendon reflex and then fasciculation. Fasciculation means abnormal muscle twitching. So, it will contract and then relax abnormally. So, that is called the fasciculation. And then in severe cases, uh, something uh, in severe cases, the person may have a some uh, GA related symptom also. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea will be there. And then knuckle rigidity, uh, neck stiff neck and then muscle weakness, paralysis also will occur. So, keep in mind polio means motor neuron. So, uh, you can, uh, so motor neurons means, so it will affect the motor activity, involuntary, voluntary movement, everywhere it will affect. So, the maximum paralysis occur within 5 days and it is followed by the muscle atrophy. Muscle atrophy means, so it is also one of the things, so loss of myocytes or loss of muscle mass, that is called muscle atrophy. And then paralysis, in majority of the cases, the paralysis also resolve within 1 year. So, in the most patient, it will resolve within 1 year, that is uh, will occur in the poliomyelitis. But the recurrence of the attack, recurrent attack also chances are there. So, the person may have uh, within uh, after one year of the polio attack, they may uh, get recovery. So, the muscle uh, again they will uh, partially or uh, somewhat 90 percent they will recover. So, the muscle paralysis will recover and then after some uh, time, so after some decades again the person may get a same paralysis, same weakness in the same muscle area or different muscle area. So, that is a recurrent attack also possible is there that is called the post polio uh, syndrome ok. And then other some symptoms like autonomic dysfunction, speech and swallowing dysfunction, encephalitis. So, autonomic dysfunction means all involuntary controls or control of heart rate, blood pressure, so everything that will come under the autonomic uh, dysfunction, autonomic function. Here it will affect the, it will dysfunction the activity. So, uh, there might be hypertension or hypotension or there might be a heart rate, heart, tachycardia, bradycardia. So, wherever it can affect. So, the most important thing is speech and swallowing dysfunction also one of the important thing. So, post polio syndrome we told right. So, after and some latent period or after and several decades, the person may have a same in same area where the initially they were got a weakness or paralysis in same muscle or in a different new muscle they will get a same type of attack paralysis or weakness they will uh, go for that is called the post polio syndrome. So, that image also we can see it is a normal motor units in B we can see acute polio. So, the center of the nerve getting denervation or, or uh, so the it will affect the uh, specific neuron and then 
பிச்சர்ஸி வி கேன் சி த ரீ இனர்வேஷனாக ரெக்கவரி ஃபேஸ் ஸோ ஆஃப்டர் சம் இயர்ஸ் த பர்சன் மேல் கிட்ட ரெக்கவரி தட் நோவ் அகெயின் விச் நோவ் தட் இஸ் அஃபெக்ட் தட் வில் ரீ இனோவேட் ஆர் தட் வில் ரீஃபார்ம் அகெயின் இன் டி போஸ்ட் போலியோ சின்ரோம் ஸோ த சேம் நோவ் ஆர் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் நோவ் இட் கேன் அஃபெக்ட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் வைஸ் மோஸ்ட்லி இன் ப்ரீ ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் எம்ஃபசிஸ் தி மேனேஜிங் த பாசிபிள் ஏர்வே அப்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் டூ due to swallowing difficulties so we will start from the a so what are the chances so we told the person uh, might have a swallowing difficulties so swallowing difficulty means what will happen so there, there might be a chance of increased chance of aspiration so aspiratory sense aspiration means it will ultimately leads to the airway obstruction and then uh, if again if aspiration happen means that will create the aspiration pneumonia and then oxygenation ventilation mismatch everything will happen so aspiration is a one of the uh, major thing we have to keep in mind so breathing part what will happen so we told all the motor neurons it will affect so the muscle will get easy weakness of the muscle will be there or there will be a paralysis of the muscle so here that muscle means it includes all our uh, respiratory muscle respiratory muscle also so if the respiratory muscle if it is affecting means the person unable to take the adequate amount of breathing or there might be a inadequate breathing pattern will be there so again breathing also one of the inadequate breathing effort or inadequate breathing will be there okay so this will happen in the breathing part so what will happen in the circulation so circulation we told autonomic dysfunction right so here that might be a left side or right side either that is hypertension or hypotension or tachycardia or bradycardia so whichever side it can go so that condition we have to keep in mind and then based on that condition we have to go for the management so these are the things so airway breathing mainly we are going with an definitive airway based on the based on the person's condition if it is indicator means straight away we are going with an definitive airway we have to support with an uh, ventilator management or transport ventilator or with an if we don't have a transport ventilator means we can manage with an ambu for certain time mostly our ambulance are equipped with a tra- um, advanced transport ventilator so we can manage those conditions so mainly in uh, so other important thing here while giving an emergency medical care we should keep always we have to keep in mind about the past medical uh, and then uh, medic uh, both medical and then uh, drug related history we have to keep in mind so not alone the polio poliomyelitis uh, disease it's include all every condition we have to keep in mind why means so think if the uh, will uh, take a concept from the uh, acute heart failure so our congestive heart failure so in congestive heart failure cases the person you are in your monitor your bp that bp is showing like a 90 60 or 90 50 that is ideally hypotension right so if you are witnessing hypotension means what our tendency we have to rush out the fluid into the person so that is the protocol so whenever we are noticing hypotension we will give the uh, one pint or one point of fluid bolus if it is not again if it is refractory means we will go with the vasopressor so that is the standard protocol so what will happen so without knowing history so already the person have a congestive cardiac failure but the monitor is showing hypotension without knowing history if you are rushing out to fluid means what will happen already the person in the congestive cardiac failure again if you are rushing out means the fluid build up the fluid overload will occur in the person that is why so whenever we are handling the person so we are going to provide a care so anyway past medical history will ask in your sample history itself so that itself will get out but we should not forget so before giving an any medication or before giving an uh, any other assessment related thing so we have to ask about the medicine mean the same thing surgical history also if possible means we have to ask so uh, that is why my professor always he will tell like don't treat the condition treat the patient so that is uh, 100% is correct right so this scenario also we told already the person have a congestive cardiac failure if you are rushing out fluid means the person will develop the some other land up in the some other complication that is why we should not focus on the condition we have to focus on the we have to put focus on the patient okay so in hospital care mainly it is a supportive analgesic and then anti inflammatory medications and then the one drug called the lamotrigine 
Lamotrigine means it is one of the drug that is classified under the anti-epileptic drug. So, in the post-polio cases, it will uh, symptomatically it will help for the person. So, it will improve the quality of the life. So, that is called the Lamotrigine that is one of the drug. So, second condition peripheral neuropathy. So, what is mean by neuropathy? Neuropathy means uh, there will be a numbness or there will be a weakness in the, uh, there will be a numbness or weakness or paresthesia. Paresthesia means numbness in the limbs because of the damage of the peripheral nerve, right. So, things easy, neuropathy means there will be a numbness or weakness or paresthesia in the limb. So, either that is upper limb or lower limb because of the peripheral nerve damage, okay. So, peripheral nerve, so peripheral nerve means we know peripheral means apart from or away from the central, right. So, that is called the peripheral. So, here peripheral nerve damage means there will not be a problem, there will not be any problem in the brain and then spinal cord. So, automatically the brain and spinal cord whatever things it want to do it will uh, it will generate. So, the signal whatever thing from the brain and spinal cord it will generate to the it will generate and then it will send to the through its pathway but the problem in the peripheral nerve alone. So, that is why it is called in the peripheral neuropathy. So, the main major causes are trauma, toxins, tumors, autoimmune attacks and then metabolic disorders. So, metabolic disorders means what are the things that will come means for, uh, for example, some of the hyperglycemia and then hypoglycemia and then uh, if you are going endocrine related thing means there hypothyroidism and then uh, if you are going renal system means there you can uremia. So, those are the some vitamin B deficiency, those are the things that will come under the metabolic disorder. So, and then for, a, for peripheral neuropathy, some of the example like trigeminal neuralgia and then gulen barry syndrome also one of the example for the peripheral neuropathy. So, assessment as like we told, we have to keep in mind the glucose level. So, either that is a hyper or hypoglycemia, both will accelerate the uh, pain or weakness or numbness or neuropathy. So, it is a glucose uh, or GRBS is a one of the concern. Second thing, the person may have a sensory or motor impairment. So, in polio we told it will specifically attack, attack the uh, motor neuron, but in peripheral neuropathy there might be a sensory related, there might be a motor related. So, whichever way it can go. Uh, in sensory ways, the person will lose the sensation, in motor ways numbness, burning sensation, pain, paresthesia and then muscle weakness are the common uh, symptoms we can notify. And then the person may have eventually lost the ability to feel their feet or other areas. So, based on the areas where it is affecting, they may uh, lost the sensation or lost the feelings. So, this condition is progressive and uh, accelerated by the high blood glucose level. So, while assessment we have to keep in mind and then while treating also the hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia based on that condition we have to treat the patient. So, management in the pre-hospital setting full of supportive. So, again uh, think if it is a hyperglycemia means so based on our protocol, based on our uh, set of guidelines you have to treat the hyperglycemia in pre-hospital scenario. In in-hospital means so, uh, each institution they have a separate separate protocol in our institution we have a delta protocol related thing. So, based on our institution protocol uh, either it is a pre-hospital or in hospital we can treat the condition of hyperglycemia. Hypoglycemia again 25 percent is dextrose or 5 percent is dextrose or glucagon uh, there is a 1 mg. Th so, those are the some set of management for the hypoglycemia. So, if you are strongly sus uh, suspecting the person because of hypothyroidism that is developing, already the person have a history of hypothyroidism means. So, again the, uh, in pre-hospital based on that investigation only we have to treat this condition. We can't blindly give the thyronam or thyroid supplement we can't give in the pre-hospital. Anyway, these are the factors we can remember. Uh, mainly in pre-hospital if we are uh, the only reliable factor is a uh, glucose level only. So, if it is hypo hyperglycemia that we can treat and then vitamin related also we have to go on through some um, investigation then only we can treat the condition, okay. So, in hospital management also mainly it focused on the pain medication and then we have to uh, uh, glucose control or we can go with and some other trauma related history means that surgical repair this sort of thing they will take care. 
So, and then anti-depression, anti-convulsant also to have a positive effect on the calming the peripheral nerves. So, these are the one of the drug of choices we are using in the peripheral neuropathy. So, do your best. Shalom.